Romans 12 1 to 2. So then, my friends, because of God's great mercy to us I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. So do you have stinky thinking? The answer to that question for most people is yes. Now Paul is going to educate you on why that's the case. Romans 8 5-9 Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you if you allow Him. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. This is why I always point out in my videos that everyone must obey the Gospel in order to be saved. And receive the Holy Spirit of God. Because He unites us with the Lord and one another. Peter said, Acts 2 36-38, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men, and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Take note that when the crowd who had once yelled out, Crucify him, Asked Peter what did they need to do in order to get right with God? Peter said that they had to do two things. First they needed to repent, of their sins. And second they needed to be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. Now, take note of when the crowd obeyed Peter's instructions. Acts 2:41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added to the church about 3,000 souls. Notice also that 3,000 people were glad to obey the gospel so that God would add them to the church. Acts 2:47, Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Take note, no one joined the church, they were added by God on the same day. So why are people being made to wait today? According to modern day preachers like Joel Austin who never even mentions repentance. He tells you to just pray a 20 to 30 second prayer and be saved. If that is true? Why did Peter tell all of those people to repent and be baptized? And why would 3,000 people gladly get into some nasty and dirty river water when they could have just easily prayed? Think about it, does that make any sense? Of course not. But that's the lie that's always taught by Joel and nearly every preacher today. Also, keep in mind, that they didn't have bathrooms with running water to be able to take a bath or a shower. Therefore, just think how long it took for 3,000 people to get cleaned up. It would have taken many hours if not days. Especially since many of them didn't live in Jerusalem. And because only God adds to the family both physically and spiritually. And he only adds to one family. This is why no one joins the church of their choice. As Joel lies and tells you to do. This is because God only has one church. And the church is the family of God. It is crucial that you realize that the building is only a convenient meeting place for the church to meet. But it's not the church. The people who have obeyed the gospel is the church. Matthew 16:18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Remember, Christ never built a building, he unites people. Only God adds a baby to one family. And babies become new additions to that family. And all babies are given the family name. The same is true with God's spiritual family which is his church. Therefore, a baby's name can't be a ward hyphenated Johnson or a Smith hyphenated Thomas. Because a baby will have only one family name. And remember, babies don't choose their families. And those families didn't choose the babies either. Only God chooses. The exact same principle is true of God's spiritual family which is the church. In other words, there are no hyphenated Christians either. Either you are, or you're not, a Christian. Take notice Paul said God's whole family wears his name. Ephesians 3 14-15 For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. John 17 21, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And God only gives his spirit to those who obey him. 
Acts 5:32, and we are as witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. And it's the Holy Spirit that unites God's family together. Acts 11:26, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Therefore, in the Bible, the disciples of Christ were just called Christians. And today, all of these different religious names come from men, not the Lord. It's essential that you realize that if your religious organization's doctrine is not based on the Bible, but instead, is based on the ideas, thoughts, and traditions of men, then it's not the Lord's church. Remember, Jesus said otherwise you're just wasting time. Matthew 15 9, their worship is worthless, for they teach their man-made laws instead of those from God. Therefore, make everyone prove everything that they are telling you with the Bible. Follow Paul's advice. And start asking questions. 1 Thessalonians 5 21, but prove everything that is said to be sure it is true, and if it is, then accept it. 1 Corinthians 3 1 and 3, brothers and sisters, I couldn't talk to you as spiritual people but as people still influenced by your corrupt nature. Even now you aren't ready for it because you're still influenced by your corrupt nature. Now can you see why there are so many carnal-minded and corrupt people claiming to be Christians? It's because they have never obeyed the gospel of Christ and received the Holy Spirit who could change their stinky thinking. Instead, they believe and follow the false doctrine of the so-called sinner's prayer. But notice the following. John 9:31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. And also, Isaiah 59 1-2, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. And the Bible never says anything about accepting Christ as your Savior and praying a sinner's prayer. This is a false and corrupt doctrine produced by denominationalism. Because in the Bible, God only accepts obedience to his word and his will. But prayer is not an option for salvation. Remember, Christ died to bring unity not division. But denominations mean division. So how can you please God by rejecting the unity he died for? Hopefully, by now you also have a better grasp on why I point out that those who tell you to accept Jesus as your Savior is lying to you. And the same is true for the phrase accept Christ. Because neither of those phrases is even in the Bible in the first place. Now if you realize that your thinking is stinky then you must follow Peter's instructions in Acts 2.38. And obey the gospel and wash away your sins with your stinky thinking. If you have watched one or more of my videos, then you know that my videos are not like any others. Their videos may make you feel good, but they are not telling you the truth that you need to know. Therefore, please share my videos with everyone. Because millions of good people are being misled to their own destruction. But they don't know it. You are investing in yourself by promoting the will and word of God with everyone you know. So that they too can become a follower and or a subscriber. And help reach many with the gospel of Christ. So until the next time, take care.